Hey y'all, hi. So, as many of you know, at the end of the year of 2022, at the end of last year, I did a thorough declutter of my makeup collection. There are a lot of videos up on YouTube documenting that declutter. I decluttered each category separately in its own video, and then at the end I did kind of a retrospective with before and after shots of my vanity, showing how everything had been stored before, how messy it had been, there was just too much stuff for my space, and then showing what remained after the declutter and how I've been storing everything since then. So I'll link all of those videos down below if you're interested in this, the idea of a streamlined makeup collection, of fewer nicer things, having an advantage maybe over excess. You might be interested in going back and watching those videos. A big question for me at the end of my declutter series was how am I going to protect basically my edited makeup collection going forward? I'm definitely not opposed to a new piece of makeup makeup entering my collection from time to time. And of course, there are always things being used up or expiring or just things that I eventually realized I didn't actually want to keep dropping off, like dropping out of the collection as time goes by. So a little bit of turnover is natural. But because I review makeup on YouTube as part of my job, I handle pretty large volume of makeup pretty much on a monthly basis. And it can be tempting to keep it all. I mean, maybe not all of it. I wouldn't say I'm always tempted to keep the makeup that I'm reviewing because there's a lot of makeup that I review and then I give it a bad review, which just doesn't work for me for one reason or another. But I do feel like because of my work, I'm in a position where I have to mindfully protect my permanent makeup collection, like my personal collection, from the deluge of makeup that enters my life for the purpose of review, most of which then exits my life. I either donate it or give it away to friends and family. So here we are almost two months into the year and I'm checking in about how my makeup collection has changed since the end of 2022. Of all the makeup that I've been handling and reviewing, which are the pieces that I've actually decided to integrate permanently into that edited collection? And what, if anything, have I decided to declutter in these two months or used up or had to get rid of for some other reason? That's what this video is about. If you're new to my channel, if you've never watched one of my videos and you're interested in content that celebrates the love of beauty, but also acknowledges that overconsumption can be a problem and tries to hold those things in balance, then you know, I hope you'll subscribe and now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So first let's talk about the things that have dropped off, the things that have exited my collection since the tour of my decluttered makeup and my makeup storage system, if it can be called that. I mean like the way that I've organized things into three drawers. Since you all who are following my career with great interest got a peep into everything at the end of 2022. It's really just a couple of things that have left us since then. And I don't have all of them with me because some of them have been disposed of. So one was that great, product, the YSL New Balm, in a very recent video, like just in the past week or so, you saw, if you were watching it, that the needle nose squeezy tube tip had broken off inside of the cap. And so there was just kind of this gaping hole that used to be the place where it was dispensed from and the lid could no longer screw on top of it. It was just a mess. I love that product, the YSL New Balm. It's like my favorite hybrid skincare primer that I tried last year. I had used quite a lot of it, which did make it easier for me to just decide to cut my losses with. It. I know that there are ways that I could have saved it, right? I could have put like cellophane over the top of the rubber band. I could have squeezed it out into a little empty pot and screwed a lid on. I could have like found a container for it. And I would have done that if I weren't in this situation. So first of all, I have a handful of other really beautiful skincare primer hybrids. Like I have plenty of that type of thing. And that's the kind of product that I hope to use up. You know, it's not like powder eyeshadow where I have a little collection and I just kind of use it and use it and use it. I'm hoping to use up the Natasha Denona Skin Glass. I'm hoping to use up the Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion. I was really kind of already on the edge of having too much of that kind of product to use up before it expired, so it doesn't hurt too much that one of them bit the bullet before it's time. And, you know, I also am reviewing new makeup all the time, sometimes getting stuff for free from brands for review when it launches. When it comes to the equation of time, energy, and value for me, the thing that made the most sense was just to let it go, <laughs> like to not stress out about it. It was totally busted, and I let it go. So that has exited my collection. The patch Patrick Ta Brow Laminator Brow Gel that I was using at the end of last year, I used it up.
And then I also decided to declutter Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief, which I couldn't find, I think, when I was doing the overhead declutters. It might not even have been there at the very end when I was filming my entire vanity. But I did find it as I was like packing things up at the end of the year, as I was like cleaning everything out, resetting. And I just put it with the makeup that I decided to declutter that I gave away to my cousins. Towards the end of January, beginning of February, I also decided to declutter this Ellis Foss product. I had it in a video about least worn makeup. It's like a lovely warm brown, lightweight lipstick, almost sheer. The formula is great. I love the brand. In theory, I really like the color, but I was reminded in that video, it was a video in which I had pulled a handful of makeup that I hadn't worn since the end of your declutter. And I was kind of looking at it and making a concerted effort to envision using it in the coming month. Everything else that I picked, I kind of got really excited about using. And this, when I swatched it and played with it, I was like, oh, the color isn't really all it's cracked up to be. I kind of remembered why I never wear it. And after giving it some thought, I decided to declutter it too. So there's been a little bit of culling, a little bit of using stuff up, a little bit of stuff just <laughs> falling apart at the seems YSL. And there are a handful of things that I decided to keep. Before I get into these things, just to clarify, the way that I make sense of this in my mind, the way that I kind of keep it separate, my personal collection and all of the makeup that you see me talking about testing, reviewing, is that I just keep it physically separate. I have a couple of boxes on top of my vanity, and in those boxes I keep makeup that I'm in the process of testing. And I also keep in those boxes makeup that I've already tested and maybe even already used to film, and that I'm still kind of thinking about in terms of like what I want to do with it long term. In the past, I've called that makeup purgatory, and I still kind of think of it that way, although I haven't been showcasing it on my channel in the same way. It's in purgatory because it's here in my life, but it hasn't officially joined the party. Like I haven't welcomed it into the inner circle. I haven't put it away in a drawer, basically. So inside my drawers right now, it looks pretty much the same as it did at the end of 2022, which is great because I love how clear and organized it is, how I can see everything. That is why I decluttered, because I wanted it to be that way. And if it doesn't stay that way or kind of close to that level of clarity, then it will all have been for naught. You know what I mean? I will lose what I gained by doing that declutter and organizing. So right now my drawers look the way that they did, of course, absent the handful of products that I just told you about. And then all of the makeup you've seen me talking about reviewing, except for the makeup I've already decided to give away to someone else and already given away, is sitting in boxes pretty much on the top of my vanity. Or if I've already decided that I'm not going to keep it, I've moved it to an official giveaway box, which is something that I store away out of sight and I just kind of like pull out and go through whenever I'm going to be visiting someone or if someone's coming over and I just want to like give them some stuff. So, and this might be getting like <laughs> into way more detail about how I organize my, my business makeup and my personal, my pleasure makeup than you ever needed to know because it's like really specific to the circumstance of someone who both reviews makeup as part of her work and is trying to keep an edited collection. We've got the inner circle in the drawers. We've got the purgatory box, which is where stuff is being tested and I'm still deciding about it. And then we've got the giveaway box where I've already decided it's fate, but it hasn't yet exited my life. Those are the three pots, basically. So the question is, what has migrated from purgatory into the drawers? Just, to, I think, kind of a handful of things as well. It's a little bit more than what's exited, but not too much. I was actually happy to see when I gathered it all together that I haven't taken on too much. I feel like by far the biggest decision was actually the first decision that I made in terms of keeping stuff. Kind of right on the cusp of the new year, I just fell hard for this Shantikai collection. And I will try not to talk about it for too long because I'm not sure if it's still available. Is their holiday collection perhaps? I don't know if it was limited and if so, how limited. They called it the Lotus, the Lotus collection. And the thing that's unusual here is that I kept so much of it. Frequently, if a brand sends me a little collection like this, there's a lippy, a blush, a highlighter, and like a softly radiant setting powder. I'll pick like one, if I really like it. Often I'll just give it all away to someone or donate it all after I've reviewed it or featured it on camera. But if I really like it, I'll usually just pick one thing. It's rare for me to keep like the entire collection like this, but I find these incredibly useful. And it is for a little bit of like a personal taste reason. It's that these products are very, very subtle. And Chantikai 
of makeup can lean that way, I think because the powders are so finely milled. But it isn't all that way. Like they sent me some blushes from their new collection and they're much more brightly colored and it feels like much more heavily pigmented than the blush from the Lotus collection. This is the color that looks in the pan, but um, I'm wearing it today actually underneath the highlighter from the same collection. And you can see it's it's not as deep as this. The color is, but the, there just isn't a ton of pigment. It's a, it's a very sheer blush in a lovely rich color, which I really, really like. That suits me so much better than a pigmented bright blush, you know? And because I'm so pale, it's just rare that I find a blush that I can just dip into with my brush, go at my cheeks, and I don't end up suddenly like looking like a clown and kind of needing to diffuse it. That's my primary experience with blush. So when I started using these products, and the same is true of the highlighter, it's just really soft. It's so soft that I can layer it on top of a blush without getting that sort of dark stripe effect. And the powder, which again, is like a very softly luminous setting powder, and I can just fluff it all over my face to mattify a little bit. I'm wearing all of these products actually all over my face today. They're just really good daily makeup products for me. Easy, lovely, pretty, impossible for me to mess up. And then we all know how much I ended up liking the like glitter dipped icy lip product. And I think it's sort of for the same reason. It's just, it reflects so much light that it has like this soft pale quality that achieves a sort of subtlety and blending in with the overall pale aspect of my skin that isn't very common in makeup. So when push came to shove at the end of the year, I realized that I actually wanted to keep all four of these products and I ended ended up adding them into my drawers. One PR product came recently in the mail and instantly basically jumped the purgatory box and went straight into my drawer. It's the Benefit Fluff Up Brow Wax. I've demonstrated it, again, recently on camera. I've been layering it underneath the Gen C Arch Support, which is what I was using before. And that's what I did today. That's how I've been doing my brows now for weeks. I think most of you have already seen it. It's like a, it's like a soft wax pomade, but it's it's thick enough that it really coats the hairs and it really effectively gives you something to sculpt. I wonder if it would truly set and last all day if I weren't layering it with the other product. It might be a little bit softer of a hold than, for example, the Patrick Ta. But because I'm combining the two, I'm getting these like bulletproof, really built up natural brows and I love it. This is a new release. You know, Benefit, I mean, they've been doing brows like since the beginning of time, but a very, very impressive new release from them, I feel, and I'm definitely just gonna use it until it's used up. Okay, and the rest of the things <laughs> that have permanently entered my collection are all pieces of makeup that Khaki gave me. My friend Khaki of the YouTube channel Khaki Reviews Beauty. I went to visit her and she gave me some makeup that she had either reviewed and didn't love or that had come in PR to her and that she didn't need or wasn't using. And I did a video where I put it all on my face. I didn't automatically decide to permanently and forever keep absolutely everything that Khaki gave me. Some of it is still in purgatory. And that's partly just because I'm trying to be really mindful this year and it just, it was a lot, you know what I mean? It was just while I was there, she was like, you should take this, you should take this. And I was like, okay, I'll try it, I'll try it. And I actually kind of came to think of that little haul as makeup that I had accepted in order to film a video. You know, it was like in a funny way, it was kind of like PR or like makeup that I buy for review. I accepted it willingly because I was like, this is gonna be so fun. I can film myself trying out this makeup that like isn't new, but it's new to me. And I, I love that. So I, I filmed the video and then I had this makeup and I was like, I'm just gonna put it through the ringer the same way that I do with everything. But some of it has made it through the ringer and has joined the party. Firstly, and not leastly, the uh, the Tom Ford quad, kind of obviously. I mean, I think this was, well, I didn't know whether I would like the powders when I tried them. But as soon as I tried them, I was like, oh yeah. It's especially this. I mean, I almost just think of it as like a single. And I'll link that video so you can see me put this on my eyes and see me swatch it and everything. It's the iconic Tom Ford quad body heat. I think these are supposed to be like wet to dry. I haven't used them wet yet, but a lot of you have recommended that I do so. And I've used it a lot I, since it's been in my drawer. I open that drawer, I look in and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna use body heat. I'm really grateful to have it. I feel like it's quite an impactful new member of the eyeshadow collection because it's getting a lot of action since it's arrived and it's just, you know, it's weighty. 
kind of iconic, really exciting. I tend to have a long and beautiful relationship with pieces of Tom Ford makeup, and I hope that will be the case here. These two Victoria Beckham eye cajals, I knew instantly that I would keep for the long haul because it's my absolute favorite eyeliner formula. Really, really creamy, blendable. I think Khaki got these in PR. They're both from the most recent launch from Victoria Beckham. It's the eye cajal, but in like a sequin sparkly formula. One of them is sequin, sequin green, which is kind of like an earthy, mucky, not too bright green with little gold sparkles in it. And the other one is Night Flash, which is black with, I think, silver sparkles. So these just went right into my eyeliner drawer. I've used the black one just once or twice, but I'm really happy to have it. I've used the green one a lot, actually. The bronze color in this formula is like my most used eyeliner of all time. So I think that both of these are going to get a lot of use. Also, my eyeliner collection specifically, I felt like it was pretty brutal when I decluttered it at the end of last year. I whittled it down to something pretty tiny, especially compared to how it started. So it didn't feel like a huge or labored decision to take on two more. And lastly, I feel like this typology lip oil kind of just sneaked in. I never really officially was like, I'm definitely going to keep this. It has made it through, but I've just been using it and using it and using it, using it like crazy, taking it with me when I go places. It's not what I have on my lips today. I'm still testing those EXA products. I'll layer it on. It's really similar, actually, like a sheer plum that ends up looking really natural. And I like how it genuinely feels like a sort of jelly oil. A lot of things that are being called lip oils these days aren't oily at all. Like, don't even have the barest hint of oil about them. They're just lip glosses. But this really feels like a tinted oil that has some body, and I like that a lot. It's the first thing I've ever tried from Typology, and I've been very impressed. So that's it for things that have officially joined my collection. It's been like a few things in and a few things out over the first two months of the year. A few more things in than out, though, especially because of that whole Chantecaille collection. I'm definitely not holding myself to the standard of having like equal things in and out. I'm not about that extremely regimented counting life anymore, but I am keeping a little bit of an eye on myself and it's just something to note. At this rate, if I'm gaining into my collection like four or five things a month that I decide to keep from what I'm reviewing, that'll be like 50 things by the end of the year and that'll make a huge impact on my little collection, right? That will, that will blow it out of the water. So I'm not totally sure that I want to proceed down that path. And that's why I'm really taking my time deciding about the things that are still in purgatory. So conspicuously absent from this video are like the Manasi 7 products that I recently reviewed, the new shades of the Merit flesh balms, the Odin's eye palettes from the recent collab, Lauren's palette, the new Chantecai collection that I was talking about with the bright colored blush the lipsticks that are like the dupes for Gone Grage or the near dupes for Gone Grage, the Jones Road makeup, all of that stuff is still in those purgatory boxes. And it's not as though it's in the boxes and I'm like using it all the time and I'm just using the fact that it's in purgatory as an excuse for like not officially adding it to my collection. A lot of it's just sitting there. Like, for example, those lipsticks that I swatched for the dupes for Gone Grage video. I made the video and now the lipsticks are just sitting there and I'm kind of just like getting used to the idea that when the time comes, I'll give them to someone. Like when someone comes over who I know will enjoy those shades of lipstick and who won't mind that each one has been swatched a couple times. I'm just like waiting for the moment to pass them on. And then in some very few cases, like the things that I've kept, the time comes and I'm like, you know, I think I really do want to keep this. Or sometimes I find myself going into the purgatory box over and over and over again for something. Like I think the Manasi 7 complexion, that white complexion stuff, I think that that's probably going to make it through because I just keep pulling it out of the purgatory box to mix it with my other complexion products. So that's one of the ways that I can tell that I actually want to keep something. But I'm fine with letting things hang out there for a couple of months before I transfer them officially to my giveaway box. And I will tell you, most of the Jones Road stuff has already been given away, even though I reviewed it so recently. It's because Joe and I recently went on a trip up to New York. We went to see Jinx Monsoon in Chicago on Broadway, which was so wonderful. And the friend with whom I stayed when I went up there isn't a big makeup person, but does have a job that she would like to wear a little bit more makeup for. For. And so I brought her basically the entire pile of Jones Road stuff. I was like, this is designed for you. It's like easy to apply, not too high impact. And I kind of talked her through the what the foundation, the miracle balms. It all looked great on her and 
it, you know, was exactly what I thought about Jones Road when I reviewed it. It's like perfectly unintimidating for somebody who's historically pretty intimidated by makeup and basically impossible to mess up for somebody who is intimidated by makeup. I did keep one of the Miracle Balms for myself, but I was really happy to find someone to take on all the rest of that makeup. Even though at the foundation, it was like the perfect match for her and looked amazing on her skin. And that's like an ideal outcome for me for makeup that I've gotten the chance to review, gotten to use for my work, gotten to make a video out of. But if I were to keep, like if I were to keep those 10 Jones Road products, it would just they would just get mixed in with everything, wouldn't get used very often. And that is how I got myself into the mess that I was in at the end of 2022 in the first place by not being judicious and not kind of filtering things as they come in. I am still very happy with my streamlined and edited collection. I mean, it's still a lot of makeup, but it feels really streamlined to me compared to how it's been in the past. The space feels really functional. Each of my products feels like it's getting the attention that it deserves. And that is the core of my motivation to be thoughtful and be judicious as I move forward. Because I don't want to give up that feeling. I don't want to give up the way things are. And I'm really happy to report here at the end of February that I have not yet lost my grip on the edited collection. I'll check back in a couple of months and let you know how it's going. I hope that this you enjoyed this. I mean, I hope it was kind of like a combination old school reckoning, like purgatory box reckoning, declutter, empties, you know what I mean? Kind of like a mishmash of a bunch of things. But I enjoyed framing it this way and, and I hope that it was fun to watch. Thank you for being here. If you've subscribed, thank you. Thank you to everyone who likes my videos, comments, everything. I really appreciate you. And I really hope you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.